Today's video is brought to you by Serpent Forge. More on them later on. The band Katrina and the Waves would be best known for their 1985 hit Walking on Sunshine and while the song is super upbeat, the history of the band isn't. Today, let's take a look at whatever happened to the group. Frontwoman Katrina Laskanich, a military brat, would grow up as a tomboy, focusing on being an athlete before becoming a musician. As she would tell the LA Times, I never had any boyfriends when I was in school. I couldn't be bothered with dances and proms and stuff like that. You had to wear uncomfortable dresses and I didn't like that. Social functions like that just didn't interest me. I was a good basketball player. I was the most valuable player on my team in my sophomore year in Holland. I was on the softball team and track team too. Laskanich's parents were strict Catholics and they wanted their daughter to attend Kansas University and eventually become a veterinarian. So of course, her becoming a musician was not their first choice. Her father was an Air Force Colonel, which meant that she lived in several places throughout her life, growing up in Nebraska, Germany, Holland, and England, where she would spend most of her life. Laskanich wouldn't discover her musical calling until she was 14, when she would ask her parents for a guitar, and in her last two years of high school, she would join a rock band, and soon wanted to become a musician, telling the LA Times. When I told my parents they got angry and kicked me out of the house, it's hard for any father to see his 16-year-old daughter join a rock band. Laskanich's voice would sometimes be mistaken for being black, and she would admit that R&B and soul was a huge influence on her growing up, idolizing artists like Etta James, Aretha Franklin, Sam and Dave, and she would tell the LA Times, for a long time I didn't listen to anything that wasn't black. Everything else seemed so tame. I got into black music, I was into the Eagles and Linda Ronstadt, after I got into black music, I melted down my Ronstadt records. The origins of Katrina and the Waves really began with guitarist Kimberly Rue and Alex Cooper, who met in England in 1975. They would start out as a band called The Waves, and their time would be short-lived, and they wouldn't record any material and would end up disbanding a few years later. Rue would leave the group in 1978 to join another group named Soft Boys, while Cooper soon joined a band that played cover tunes called Mama's Cookin', which also happened to feature the 16-year-old musician Laskanich and her boyfriend Vince De La Cruz, who she met from church choir. Laskanich was performing illegally at the time, being under 18, and she would also act as the band's manager for the time being. Soft Boys would disband in 1981, and Cooper soon rejoined Rue in his new outfit, and the group would temporarily change their name to The Waves and play clubs and military bases as a way to garner a lot of interest on military bases for the men who hadn't seen women for a long time they added katrina to their name and so the band became katrina and the waves and they soon started attracting a lot of men to their shows rue would end up being the principal songwriter for the group coming up with songs for laskanich to sing it would be around this time the band started to work on what would be their first album paying for it out of their own pockets the band would release their debut lp walking on sunshine in 1983 which featured the famous title track However, the song almost never made it onto the record, with Laskanich telling The Guardian, One day, he stood in the chapel where he rehearsed and presented Walking on Sunshine. I thought it really wasn't us. Vince De La Cruz, our bass player, thought it was irritating. I was going through a Velvet Underground and Nico phase, lots of black eyeliner, and here was a Motown-type fun song about sunshine. By now, we'd realized however annoying Walking on Sunshine was at first, it was impossible to get out of your head. Rue's time with Canadian group Soft Boys resulted in a deal with a small Canadian label, and they would put out the band's two first albums, one of which featured the song Going Down to Liverpool, which would be recorded by the Bangles and garnered interest in Katrina and the Waves, as soon enough Capitol Records came calling, signing the band at the end of 1984. Capitol wanted to put out a new album from the band using songs from the group's first two albums. Laskanich, who was working as a dishwasher on an American military base in England at the time, made the decision to have herself and the band members put on a salary rather than getting a substantial advance for the album. She would end up being able to buy a car and a house, and signing with a major label though didn't really change the members' outlook on being a musician, with Laskanich telling the LA Times, not too long ago we were working ratty clubs in London for no money, nobody cared about our music, it seemed like we might get a record deal by the time I was 40. I can't forget that. This is still a transition period, I don't want to get too caught up in this glitter. I'm not sure how long we'll be around, if our second album fails, we could be done for, and it could fail. It was after signing with Capitol Records, the label wanted to take some of the songs and remix them, as well as re-record them and overdub them, 
One of the changes on Walking on Sunshine is that the original version used a drum machine and the band had undertaken so many takes to get the drums just to their liking. But Capitol Records would outsource the remixing of the song, listing producer Scott Litt, who most famously would go on to work with Nirvana and R.E.M. One of Litt's suggestions was to re-record the song using a real drum kit. Capitol Records would release Katrina and the Waves in 1985, and the record was a smash hit thanks to the infectious first single Walking on Sunshine, which proved to be a top 10 hit, helping the album peak at number 28 on the Billboard charts, resulting in it moving about half a million copies going gold. However, during an interview with the Washington Times, Laskanich would claim a different song was meant to be the first single and could have changed the trajectory of the record, saying, Do You Want Crying was supposed to be the first single. It was on a demo of four songs. The tape went around and DJ said, It's the Sunshine song. It's so obvious. Okay, we know it's catchy because it's irritating, but we weren't sure if we wanted to go with that as the first single. We wanted to go with something that was far more serious. Now a word from today's sponsor, Serpent Forge. They sent me a cool necklace to try out for myself, the Raven Skull. I've always been a big fan of jewelry. In fact, I always feel weird not wearing it. The first thing I noticed is that the Raven Skull is not cheap and mass produced like so much stuff you see all over social media. It's made from real 925 sterling silver and it's not hollow and has a really nice weight to it. And that's the same for all their products, whether it's rings or necklaces. They're also a great conversation starter, especially if you're like me and you're introverted. Use the promo code ROCKSTORIES for 15% off. The link is down below in the description box. The success of the group's 1985 album resulted in Laskanich making amends with her parents, saying, When the band started to make it, things changed between me and them. They saw I wasn't fooling around, that I wasn't flaky. I never got any encouragement from my parents before. If I hadn't had some success, things probably would still be bad between us. The band would release their follow-up album in 1986, simply titled Waves, and while it would peak at number 49 on the album charts, it sold about half of what its predecessor did, and the band soon ran into trouble with their label. Unable to produce another hit, the band soon got labeled as a one-hit wonder, with Laskanish telling NPR, They thought we were the new monkeys, the Beach Boys, but we weren't even that kind of band. We were cooler. I thought I was Nico from the Velvet Underground, Black Turtlenecks, Eyeliner, No Smiling in Photographs. The band soon lost the recording contract, but they would end up being smart by holding on to their publishing, so the money from Walking on Sunshine kept rolling in. The song has been licensed to video games, movies, including American Psycho and High Fidelity, as well as appearing in countless commercials selling medicine and diapers. According to NPR, the song still generates about $1 million per year, and the band would continue to release albums throughout the 80s and the 90s on various labels, but they would mostly be limited to Canada and Europe. In 1997, the band would win the Eurovision Song Contest in the UK with the track Love Shine a Light, becoming the group's biggest hit in the UK. But the following year, Laskanich would leave the group after his disagreements with her band members, and she would tell a publication, We knew after we won the Eurovision Song Contest in 1997 that everything was going to change. The perception of the group was completely different. It became all about me, and that was a tricky thing. She would tell This Is Not Retro about the band's final years. It was really quite a simple matter of the band feeling like they wanted to go in one direction, and me feeling like I wanted to go in another direction. I felt perhaps for the final 10 years or so of the band's career, as if we weren't really moving forward much. She would reveal in the same interview that there also were legal issues between the band members, and that led to her no longer receiving royalties from the song, but rather getting a payout, and she wouldn't be able to use the band's name going forward. The band attempted to replace Laskanich, but they were unsuccessful in doing so, and in 1999 they called it quits. The members would pursue other musical ventures with Katrina becoming a radio DJ, going into musical theater, and becoming a solo performer and releasing solo records. As to whether we'd see a reunion, she would tell an interviewer, oh no, those guys were older than me and they're very much officially retired. In 2016, Rue would sell his rights to Walking on Sunshine. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. We'll see you again at Rock and Ultra Stories. Take care.